Hello, this is Jordan, and this is your Precious Metals Market Update. After the close of trading, today is Tuesday, July 14th, 2015. First, we're going to focus on the daily candle charts for gold and silver. Looking at gold, it's below the 20-day and 50-day moving average. Of course, in recent weeks, we talked about the last several years when the metals have been below the 50 and the 200 day and that's really been a, a danger warning because when they're below those moving averages and breaking below major support that's really when they could start to be in crash mode or severe decline mode and we're seeing that risk again here and so when you're looking at the 20 day and the 50 day moving average you're, those tend to be resistance for a market when it's in a severe decline and what we see here with gold is it bounced a little bit last week from that support around 1150 it looks like that bounce has petered out today it closed at 1153 uh, gold is well below the 20 day and the 50 day moving average so it's so weak that it wasn't even able to test the 20 day moving average at least not yet i mean it is possible gold could test last week's low and, and bounce for a little while again, but nevertheless, uh, this market is looking really, really weak right now. And I mean, there's a chance that a big breakdown could start in the next couple of days. I mean, we've been saying that for the last couple of weeks, but uh, the next day or two should be really telling to see if does, to see if gold can make another little bounce here around 1150, or if it's gonna go below that and, and have that uh, crash type decline uh, into the low 1100s or below 1100 uh, very quickly. And we see the same picture in silver, which really could be leading because last week silver had that big breakdown on Tuesday, then it recovered a little bit. And since then it had a decent rally, rallied about 7%, uh, got back to the breakdown point. But yesterday it failed at its 20-day moving average and so today it's confirming that failure turning down again it looks to be rolling over again and so the risk here is if this continues it's going to retest that low around uh, 1460 or 1470 or wherever it was so unless silver can quickly reverse what's happening here and, and get back above 1550 in the 20-day moving average Unless it can do that, it, it really looks like it's going to be in trouble and trade down to uh, last week's low. So like gold, it's below both the 20-day and the 50-day moving average, and it's threatening to make uh, new bear market lows. It's just a very dangerous situation. And I want to talk about the COT. In this chart, we're just looking at the gold COT. We've bolded the net position. Uh, which is made up of the short and long positions. We also show the gross short positions there in the middle and the gross long positions there at the bottom. And we measure these as a percent of open interest because that allows consistency uh, when comparing to positioning in the past. And remember, this data was as of last Tuesday. So we had a lot of analysts, a lot of newsletter writers over the weekend talking about, well, the COT is bullish and we're going to see the metals rally the COT rally may have already ended. I mean, it really began last week and on Tuesday, and this data is as of Tuesday, and, and since that day, that's when silver had that good three or four day rally and gold rallied for three days. And so gold's net position was 11.7% as of last Tuesday, which means as of now or as of last Friday, it was likely higher because the market went up. Even looking at that 11.7%, that's still some distance above the 2013 low at 4.4%. So I really want to see the net position go below 4%. That would be at a 14-year low, and that would really register as extreme bearish sentiment, in my opinion. Just something to keep in mind, the COT itself is not going to stop gold or silver from falling especially where they are right now. Silver COT was 7% as of last week. Its low was below 3% in 2013. So where they are now, it's not going to stop the metals from falling. I want, I want to take a look back at 2013. I'm just going to mention a couple things here. 
when gold was starting that big breakdown below 1550, or I should say when it was in the middle of it, the net position at one point when gold was at 1388 was at 15%, which was the lowest in 11 years. And I remember looking at the market then and seeing, you know, looking at the COT and seeing that, well, sentiment's at an 11 year low, it's going to have a big bounce at some point. It never happened. I mean, it may have had little bounces along the way, but ultimately gold fell another $200 an ounce. And a couple months later, you know, it finally had a somewhat of a sustained uh, recovery. So where this, that's just another important point. You know, I'll say it again for the third time. Where the COTs are right now, they're not going to stop gold and silver from falling. Now, if, if we see the market breaking down again, both metals and this, the, the COT readings get close to 0%, we'll have to evaluate you know, how price action is, how oversold the market is. But when we see the COTs get close to 0%, you know, that tells me that we could be very close to an important bottom. Looking at the gold stocks here, this is a weekly chart that goes back about 20 years. This is the GDM index, which is really the forerunner, the father of GDX. So if you want to look at a history of GDX, this is one way to do it. And GDM market closed at 462 today. It recently lost support around 500. Those were the lows in 2008. And then at the end of last year, so we can see that the market has lost that support. It's in breakdown mode. And, I mean, it is possible the market can snap back and retest that breakdown at 500 uh, like silver has done in the last week. You know, it's retesting its breakdown. But even if that happens, I, I, the, the bigger picture still remains bearish here. The next strong support for this index is around 400. So that's about 13% downside from where we are. And, and look, looking at the overbought, oversold indicators at the bottom, the market is not yet close to being very oversold or extremely oversold. Now, certainly it's a little bit oversold, but when the market's falling like this and it doesn't, it's not near that strong support, you want to wait for it to get really oversold, not just a little oversold. So looking at those oversold, overbought indicators, we can see that the market is not quite there yet uh, at, at major extremes. And who knows, you know, maybe in the next couple months it'll happen. The market will go down to 400, that strong support. And then maybe these indicators will tell us that the market is very oversold or extremely oversold. That's what we want to see to be bullish. It's still quite early. Uh, I mean, we're not quite there yet, in my opinion. And last, this is an updated bear analog chart for all the bear markets and gold stocks. Uh, the Barron's Gold Mining Index, as of the end of last week, if it declines another 10%, then it would match the worst bear market ever, which was the 96 to 2000 bear. Now for GDM and GDX, from the end of last week, it's about a 10% decline. So miners are getting very, very close to that matching that worst bear market ever. And you can just see, looking at the history here, uh, the, the two worst bear markets ever are quite clear. The, they're the one we're in and the one from 96 to 2000. But again, as I said in the last slide, not bullish yet. It looks like there's more downside ahead. And especially with gold not having broken below 1140 to 1150 yet. I really want to see gold make that breakdown, get really oversold, uh, trade do a thousand or a thousand fifty. That's really the point I think when we're going to start to see gold stocks form a major, major bottom. But again, we're not quite there yet. Thank you so much, everyone, for listening and watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Visit my website at thedailygold.com. You can email me if you have any comments or feedback. And that's all for now. I wish you all the best of luck in the days ahead, and we'll talk to you again in the next week or two. Thanks.